In 2015, Black Mill and M2 H Studios released Verdun, the first World War I shooter that we had in a long, long time. It took a completely different approach when it came to FPS gameplay, with its frontline push and pull mechanics sending players over the trenches into no man's land, a mist machine gun fire, artillery and gas attacks coming from every angle. It was immensely popular at the time and especially in a smaller historical community that has such a loyal fan base. However, since the hype for that has died down a long time ago and since the sequel Tannenberg has sort of fallen off their radar there was always the question are they going to do anything else are they going to focus on any of these individual battles from the great war what's next coming to take its place and thus we heard a few months ago another project was on the horizon and so I present you Isonzo the third game in the World War I series, Isonzo, is taking players into the Italian Alps, a completely new setting and style to get your grips into. We have seen the dirty, bloody trenches of the Western Front, the open and terrifying charges of the Russians in the East, and now it is time for mountainous fighting and a sniper haven in the Mediterranean. Once again, the devs are basing the entire game on this one battle, or this one front. Isonzo was a string of 12 or so battles with the Austro-Hungarians against the Italian fighters, fighting through the idyllic towns and the high up mountains throughout this jaw-dropping countryside, and that's what they're hoping to replicate here. You see, with Verdun and Tannenberg, these were bloody, muddy, and body-caked battlefields, yet Isonzo is almost going for a terrible symphony approach, juxtaposing the beautiful background of the mountains and towns that lay within to the absolute horror that is taking place throughout. With the introduction of artillery placements, barbed wire and engineering classes needed to place and cut through. It's not just going to be the enemy shooting down hails of lead at you as you try and scale the mountains to the position, but also the terrain itself is going to be causing many, many deaths, something to be included within your strategies of bombardment and attacking positions. But you've probably played the other games in the World 1 series, so you kind of know what this is about. Let's actually look at the gameplay that we've been shown so far. Isonzo has a completely different style in my opinion. If you're fed up of that mud, blood and rats gnawing at your toes in the trenches, it's now great because you can fall to your death instead from a cliffside of a beautiful Mediterranean hill. Look. I love a Tuscan holiday just as much as the next guy. I mean, look, here's me in 2018 enjoying the view. But in this situation, I didn't have to worry about an Austro-Hungarian sniper sitting on the mountainside. I could enjoy my pina coladas in peace. Many of the gamers within Isonzo itself, they will have some more linear approaches with attacking and defending teams, holding and moving onto points as you try and conquer or repel each stronghold, fighting between houses or up shingled pathways. And so far, as much as I can see, they're going for a more different art style with it as well. Verdun and Tannenberg were never battlefield level photo real looking titles. I mean, the graphics were good, but they weren't at the forefront of graphical fidelity even at the time. But it's a smaller studio. They were never meant to be, and I don't think we can expect that. However, Isonzo, with years of further experience, technology and manpower combined, with a more open and more bright setting, I think it does give this title and the series in general a more fresh lick of paint to enhance the visual fidelity to another level. I think definitely one of the main things that make this look a step above the other games in the series has got to be the setting. I mean, part of me just wants to sunbathe in the hot Italian sun, until, that is, I remember I'm about to get my arms blown off by an artillery barrage. And the terrain destruction, oh yes, the terrain destruction. We've never really seen this in Verdun or Tannenberg before. This is a completely new addition to the franchise, being able to blow up bridges to dynamically change the map, especially when you have points on one side or the other. When one team is trying to push across the bridge, that bridge can be blown up they're gonna have to find another way to do it or it might be the objective itself the Italians trying to defend and they have to blow that bridge to stop the Austro-Hungarian advances thus completely changing the campaign in the future could this go even further as well we've seen fighting through the towns and it looks gorgeous but imagine if you're able to get inside the buildings and then blow them up that would be amazing okay I'm very doubtful that that will happen because once again it's a smaller studio but it could be cool right something that could come in the future. Now they've already added in destruction, it doesn't seem all that impossible, does it? Isonzo looks very, very promising, and I'm gonna be following it every step of the way. It's already going through alpha testers at the moment, and I don't think it's all that far from release. But let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. But leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel as we're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers as soon as possible. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.